Once you have your UAD Apollo Twin connected to your computer, you'll want to install the console software, which is what you see behind here, and the meter and control panel. And if I remember correctly, and it's been about a year and a half since I've done a fresh install, but I believe that both the console and the meter slash control panel software come as part of the same installation. So within the meter, you can access the control panel by clicking this button. And the control panel will show you information about your UAD configuration, including which devices are connected. Right now, I just have an Apollo Twin MK2 Duo. I can see how many plugins I have loaded up. I can see which version of the plugins I'm on. Check for any updates to those plugins. Within the plugins tab, I can see uh, which plugins I've actually paid for or which ones actually came as part of my, you know, UAD device, uh, the ones that they give you. They usually give you about maybe 12 to 14 and sometimes when you get your <laughs> UAD device during certain certain times of the year, they might throw in some really good plug-in uh, bundles for you. So just be mindful of that. That's one mistake I made is I bought my device probably maybe one month too early and so I missed out on getting probably about maybe a thousand dollars worth of free plugins so just be conscious of that back to this tab though i'm not i'm not bitter yes i am just a little bit just a little bitter but um within this tab you can see uh which plugins you have tested out so obviously i've, I've you know have an expired demo of the ssl 4000 g bus compressor compressor collection um you, and you can also start up any new demos for plugins you want to test out now a couple things about the demos so Usually, if you buy new plugins from UAD, they will let they will basically automatically reset your expired demos. And when you buy new plugins, you can authorize them here. The other part of that is that I have actually, before I purchased plugins, before I've actually asked UAD or sent them an email and said, "Hey, is it okay if I test out this plugin again?" And they've actually just reset all of my demos and let me start from scratch. And I just tested out the plugins I was interested in before I bought it. Last thing I'll talk about on the plugins is that whenever you load up your DAW, whether it be Logic Pro, which is what I'm using right now, or Pro Tools or whichever DAW you're using, and you look at your plugin list, all of these plugins are actually going to show in your list. So um, just because you see them there doesn't mean you can use them all. So you, you will, if you don't own the plugin, you will have to authorize the demo. And obviously, if the demo has expired, then you won't be able to use it at all. So just because you see the plugin in the list doesn't mean it's actually usable. All right, so configuration tab here, as well as the help tab, which is pretty self-explanatory, just links to um, help resources. So now within the meter, let's get that meter back up here. This meter is actually very important and a key part of <laughs> what you'll be need to monitor. So obviously, as you saw earlier, I have a an Apollo Twin MK2 Duo, which is the dual core version of the Apollo Twin. This DS DSP meter tells me how much processing I have left and how much I'm using. So right now I'm using about 31% of my processing. And whenever I load up a plugin, effectively, I'm using processing on my device. So right now, if I just use these two plugins as an example, I have the RealVerb Pro loaded up. And I also have a CL1B compressor loaded up. So if I turn this compressor off, I drop down from 31% to 26. If I turn off the reverb, then I drop down from 26 to 20%. So as you notice, both of these plugins use varying amounts of DSP. And so UAD has a link on their website, and I'll try to put it at the bottom of this video for all of their plugins and how much processing they actually use. So you want to be mindful of that. And that actually may help you make your decision on which, you know, Apollo twin you want to go with. So um, not all plugins are weighted equally. And obviously the more plugins you have loaded up, it's going to use up more DSP and certain plugins use very little DSP and some use a ton of DSP. Like I believe SSL uses, I uh, used a ton of DSP. So you can't load up a bunch of those up and then expect to load up other plugins depending on your device. So, just be conscious of that. Let's turn this back on. Turn that back on. All right. So now to the console. So within the console, this is going to be the software that we're going to interface with to kind of do all of our recording through 
you want to use this to do all your recording through. So you don't want to record straight through your DAW, although you can, but you defeat the purpose of why you got UAD to begin with. So let's, let's talk through that a little bit. The first thing you see here is, an, is the overview view. I can switch my view here by clicking over here. So instead of me just seeing everything, I can see just my input here. I can see my inserts per channel, and I can also see my sins per channel. So right now, if I look at the overview, um, analog one and analog two correspond to my mic slash line inputs on the back of my device. So I can actually rename this if I wanted to, but analog one is what it, what it defaults to. Analog two is what I'm using because I'm using mic slash line two. And there's also some virtual channels here, and I won't get into that right now, but these are uh, have pretty you know interesting purposes if you use them uh, in certain ways. So, all right, so uh, let's start here at the input stage. So at the input stage, you can determine whether you want to have a mic or a line level signal. So I just clicked on that, and that switched from a mic to a line level. The other thing is that you also have an instrument input. So as you noticed on the front of the device, as I mentioned earlier in the previous video, that the uh, front of the device has an instrument input. And so whenever you put your or plug in an instrument in, into that uh, input, it will switch channel one to a high Z by default. So that will get your instrument level signal. You also notice here that you have the same, those lights that you saw whenever you had the preamp button selected on your Apollo Twin, those lights that were on there also are visible here. So I can control phantom power turn, you know, enabling or disabling phantom power from here. I can control my high pass filter from here. So if I turn that off, it actually turns off the light on my device. If I click on my device here, it turns it back on here. I can also control my phase and my pad here. Um, I'll skip this and because this is actually I'm gonna I want to spend a bit more time on this so I'll come back to the unison section the next section here are our inserts so within the insert section this is where you can record certain effects like auto tune or compressors or tape uh, on the way in when you record a vocal or whatever uh, whichever instrument you want to record through here so, so these are all of the plugins that you can select are all categorized of course and you can choose to put an effect here now just because you have the insert here doesn't mean it's actually being recorded so in order to record the um, plugin you want you want to click on this button here and it actually switches it to red now when I did that you'll also notice that this little button lit up over here as well so whenever I want to let's say I wanted to turn all of these channels on and record whatever I had going on in these channels for all of them globally I can click on that button and it will set all these to globally record if I want to just monitor I can set these to just monitor now let's if I had this one turned on then both of these will be illuminated obviously because I have some that are set to monitor and this one is just set to record so when with this section obviously you just want to be careful what you commit here if you do record the you know record the effect onto your final recording because whatever you do here you can't undo effectively so right now i'm recording with some compression on very light compression i would you know if you're not sure about you know recording with an effect on i would just be i was, you know err on the side of caution and just you know if you want to monitor the the effect on there then that's perfectly fine but don't commit to it unless you know what you're doing there are uh, you know scenarios under which you would want to use this obviously if you want to impart color via compression or via you know uh, tape saturation or even obviously auto tune if you want you, that might be an effect you want to keep on there then that's where this insert section would be valid next section is our sins so let's say you had a singer and she wanted to hear he, he or she wanted to hear reverb in their headphones so this send section here will send the volume of uh, basically your um, instrument, whether it be vocal or piano or what have you, whatever you're sending through here. And it will send it out to this auxiliary track. So right now I have Aux1 has the Real Verb Pro plugin turned on. Default, you know, acoustic preset. 
And so you should be able to hear the reverb, obviously. And you can turn this up or down and, you know, sweeten it to taste. And you have multiple inserts here. So if you want to use multiple inserts here to, uh, to have an effect going to the headphones, you can certainly do that as well. And you also have another auxiliary channel here. So I'm using aux one, but you know, if you have two people recording or two things going in here and you wanted to have uh, insert here and insert there for channel one, channel two, you know, it's really up to you. And the last section here is our pan, our solo, you know, and mute. And this is obviously, you know, for the so I can turn it on or off. One other thing too is that in this uh, section over here, I can actually turn my monitors up or down. I can use the volume here. I can also do the talk button. So if I want to, you know, instead of hitting the button on top of the UAD device here and holding that talk button down, I can do it from here as well. So pretty much anything that you want to do from the hardware you can do from this console as well.